Today I have two shirts to show you, classic shirts with raglan sleeves that fit amazing, camp style collar. I made one as a shirt, blouse as you will. And also the same thing, but I made it like a little jacket, sneak peek. Hi sewing friends, I'm Karina from liftingpinsandneedles.com. Welcome to this channel that is all about sewing, limitless sewing. Before I hop on to the main content of this video, which is showing you the shirts, I wanted to give you a huge thank you, huge hugs from me all the way from Brazil. I have enjoyed thoroughly reading all of your messages in the previous video. There's over a thousand messages and I love reading all of the reasons that you love sewing, all your stories. Your messages have touched me very deeply. I just love knowing why you love to sew. All your lovely words towards me, your encouragement has been so, so important for me and I'm very, very grateful. If you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm not going to say any more. Just go ahead and watch the previous video if you haven't. I think you'll enjoy watching it and there might be something for you in there as well. Now back to this video, this is about the Tropicana shirt from Wardrobe by Me. This is a pattern that is for women obviously, but it is inspired in the look of a pattern that Wardrobe by Me has for men, the tropical shirt that is an older pattern in the catalogue. And it's a really cool style, I've shown that style to my son and he is a fan. He would love a tropical shirt in a really bold rayon tropical print so I think that down the line I will make one of those for him and I've made two Tropicana shirts to share with you they are both very different very different fabrics but using the same pattern this video is a paid collaboration with wardrobe by me YouTube channel and brand so I have filmed some sewing footage and created a different video for the wardrobe by me channel I get paid to do that and I'm making a video for this channel that is different has different content but both of these videos complement each other so please go and have a look at the wardrobe wardrobe by me channel i'll let you know in a little sec what is included in the wardrobe by me channel video and what you can see here that's different they will both give you a lot of resources if you want to get the tropicana shirt for yourself you can use the code tropicana 10 for 10 percent off of the regular price and i will leave my affiliate link down below if you would like to use it i make a little commission from there so i thank you very much if you do use my affiliate link and as for the features you will have a camp style collar here, a collar and a lapel. For the look of it, you have two options on the pattern. One is to have a rounded collar and lapel or a square sort of with a corner lapel and a corner collar. That's, it. That's the option that I like. Down below, you have a bust pocket and you can also choose whether you want to do that rounded or with corners. I like the corners. <laughs> you have raglan sleeves that are so easy to sew, so easy to fit. And this is a woven style, so there are different things that you need in woven raglan sleeves for them to fit well because you need to incorporate this shape here on the shoulder. So you will find a front sleeve and a back sleeve piece for the raglan sleeves and a seam that goes down the center of your arm and will incorporate a seam that is curved which has a dart there but you can't see it because it's incorporated into the seam line. So I really like that about the shirt, it fits really well. Down the bottom here for the hem, you don't just have a typical hem, right? You have a little slit on this sleeve piece that could be elbow length or three quarters. And the construction of that slit is so, so cool. I really enjoyed it and so clean on the outside and on the inside. It'll give you a pretty deep hem, which means that you can fold this up and cuff it if you want to. I think that looks really cute. Then down the front, you will have your facing and it is a button up. So you can put five or six buttons down the center. Down the side seams towards the hem, you will have a little slit. I think that's really nice and it matches the slit on the sleeve of the hem. I think that's really cute. And towards the back, you have a center back seam with shaping. It's not just straight. You don't cut that on the fold. It'll give you some shaping at the waist. And that seam is finished with French seams. I think that's really cool. The whole pattern is constructed using a 3-8 seam allowance, which is always my favorite seam allowance, except for that back seam, which has half an inch seam allowance. That's because it's finished with the French seam. So I really like that. It gives it a really nice clean look. When you look at your shirt hanging on the hanger, it's so nice, so clean. I really like that. You will have some bust darts that are slightly angled for shaping. I think that's great. I'm always a fan of bust darts when they are present in patterns because it's just going to make your feet so much better. To make the Tropicana, you can use so many types of woven fabrics. I'm sure you're going to have an abundance of them in your fabric collection. If you like purchasing wovens, you can go from very lightweight to a medium weight, medium to heavy even, if that's what you like. So, you know, anything will work. Silk, rayon, crepe, linen blends, 
cotton, cotton blends, all your types of cotton lawns, that sort of fabric, shirting, chambray, a very light denim, so, so, so many options. For the two that I've made, I've chosen one that is 100% rayon. It's a solid with Swiss dot details and a linen look. I like solids with a texture and this one's perfect. The color I've chosen is red and I love it. It's just a classic red shirt and I super love the color and the texture of the fabric was really nice to work with. And then for my other version, I've chosen a linen, it's a heavier fabric, it has a linen rayon blend, mostly linen, a smaller percent of rayon in there and that is a medium weight fabric. But I'll tell you the details about that later, about why I've chosen the different types. They both work, they're both perfect. You'll find sizes 0 to 24 US with the equivalent of 30 to 54 European available in this pattern. I've chosen my proper size according to my body measurements to make my light rayon version because I'll be just be wearing that on top of my skin. No layers underneath, so size 16 is what I've chosen for that one. And for my linen version, I always intended to make it to be like a little jacket. So something that I will wear on top of a dress, on top of a fitted top or anything like that. So I would always have a layer underneath. That means that I need extra space in there. <laughs> if you look at the finished garment measurements and compare them to the body measurements, you'll see that this is a semi-fitted style. You will see around three inches of positive ease at the bust, which is fine if you're just wearing nothing underneath. And at the hips, there's about one and a half inches. So it's not much. The little slits will give you a little bit of leeway. Definitely, if I was planning to make this again in a heavier fabric and use it as a little jacket, I wanted it to be bigger and so that I have more ease in there. So I've made a whole size up for my linen version I've made a size 18 just so that I'm sure that I have enough space everywhere that I can wear things underneath and I'm not going to be feeling restricted or that I can't button up properly because whatever I'm wearing underneath is adding to the volume that my body already has in there you know <laughs> you put layers on and all your measurements get larger instantly so I've made a 16 in the light rayon just to use on top of my skin normal as you would wear a shirt and a size 18 on the linen version just to be made as a little jacket. Sizing adjustments are very common for me. I added one and a half inches at the shorten and length line, not because the shirt is cropped or anything. I know what lengths I like and I just wanted mine to be that length. That means I added one and a half inches at the shorten and length line. I did lower my bust up by an inch, which is something that is super common that I do all the time. And it's just an adjustment that I need for things to fit well on my body for any brand for any type of design I look at that and I know immediately that I need to lower that so I've done it with this one as well before we hop into up close and so personal I'm going to show you my red version this is how it looks so pretty it's got the Swiss dot detail on the fabric this is a little slit on the sleeve it'll be the same technique if you're doing the elbow or the three-quarter length and this is a deep hem to see how to sew the sleeve in full detail with the seam, the full way to sew the slits, how to set it into the armhole, every single step is on the video I made for Wardrobe By Me YouTube channel. This is a paid collaboration. So if you hop over there, you will see how to sew all this. It's my same teaching style, my same visuals, everything the same, only that it's on the Wardrobe By Me channel. At Wardrobe By Me also, you will see videos about the tropical shirt, which is for men. We'll sew alongs with all the steps, including how to sew this collar style. So that's already on the Wardrobe By Me channel. It's a great resource. You'll find the classic technique where the facing reaches up to the shoulder seam there. And then on this upper collar, you do a little snip and then you fold it in. So that is how I've sewn this one. So you can see in detail how to sew it on the Wardrobe By Me YouTube channel because the technique for the men's tropical shirt and the Tropicana shirt is exactly the same. For those of you who are on Patreon and have access to my exclusive content, you will find the technique for this specific version there. You have a bust start right there. Down here you have the slit, the center, the buttons, the back seam there, that's how it looks on that side. And on the inside, you can maybe see the French seam there. It's so clean, so neat, so nice. I really like it. I've paired it with a black skirt, classic. Let's see how it looks. This is my red Tropicana shirt made out of a rayon sweet start. I have one and a half inches added to here at the short and length line. I have a little slit on the side that is part of the pattern. At the back with a center seam. 
with French seam, super nice. Super fresh to wear, super comfortable. I have one bust pocket on this side. On the side here, there's a buster. It's angled and I lowered it one inch to match me. Little slit. And this is the super cute feature that these sleeves have, both for the elbow and the three quarter length. A deep hem with a slit. And it's so, so nice, so clean. You could wear this folded up if you wanted to like this. And because the hem is deep enough, you can do that as well. I think that's cute. But I think that would work better with a fabric that's a little bit more structured. It's very wet today. I am getting a little bit wet, sprinkling a little bit. But you can see the top part. This is the collar. I've chosen the square option. I've got the lapel also with the square option. There is a rounded one if you like that look better. You can have that option there. And it's a really nice step. You know, I choose the button that goes at my bust height first. I place a pin there and that is my first reference to put the ones that go above and below because I really want there to be a button at my bust height. Doesn't necessarily match the references on the pattern for the button holes and buttons. I really like the curve of this raglan sleeve. You've got a front and a back sleeve with this incorporated shoulder that into the seam, which is very nice. You don't see in the men's shirt, the men's shirt has a traditional sleeve with no shaping in there. It's looser and it's just a different sleeve, <laughs> totally different. I really like this one. Yeah, this is the best feature for me. It's so pretty, it's a small detail, but very unique and not something that you see commonly on a hem. I really like that. You know, when you see it from far away, it looks like a V, but you have all this business here and it's really nice. I did top stitch here a few of the features on the sleeves, but not around the collar just to highlight this and I top stitch the back seam that you probably can't see <laughs> you know red is my favorite color anything I make in red is always amazing for me and the fact that I found a solid red with texture is great because that's my favorite type of solid fabric to use just to have a little bit more interest in there and have the fabric not be so plain this is a straight size 16 and I really like the fit to wear it as a shirt traditionally just over my skin for the summer it's perfect i think this is a great shirt pattern i really liked everything about it sewing the techniques i love having a red one it's great it's a classic for me i don't usually go out this late at night to the place where the animals go but baby i'm here and i'm watching you there's just one thing you should know Girl, you are my fire I'll miss you through that The sewing aspects I want to focus on on this video for my channel about the Tropicana shirt have my own twist and my own spin to it and you will see mainly the linen version that I opted to make as a little jacket. I mentioned this in my plans a little while back while I was showing you fabric and actually this little plan I showed you a little while ago did come true because I actually did make what I was saying I was going to make. Sometimes I change my mind but not this time. What I'm doing here is creating a back facing here so that I can sandwich that collar between the facing pieces and that means that you don't need to snip into the upper collar. I think that is a technique that puts people off making shirts and I'm trying to find ways that are easier that will give you just as lovely results and that will make these projects more approachable for you so you can do that first and maybe down the road try the classic technique which involves snipping into the upper collar. So, I've done this before with a shirt that just had a dolman sleeve, so you had a regular shoulder seam. This one is different because you have several pieces that compose all this neckline. So the neckline is composed of the front pieces, one raglan sleeve piece, another one, and then the back has two pieces. <laughs> so I am going to show you how you can create a back facing that will complete the whole neckline and you can have a beautiful facing to put there that will look just as pretty and be just as comfortable as doing the classic technique but will make sewing a shirt like this so much easier and pretty much stress free without doing that little snip there in the collar so let's go ahead and see don't you think this is starting to Here 
Yeah, all the pieces cut out out of fabric and everything prepared and ready to sew. This is the back pattern piece. It has a center back seam. That one will be finished with a French seam. Very neat and then top stitched. This is the front. There is a side bust out there that I have already marked with a tracing paper. Those are the bust pockets that will go on the front. That is the front facing that has already been interfaced. Two pieces for the raglan sleeves, a front sleeve and a back sleeve. That's the seam in the center already incorporates a shoulder dart there for the shaping, so it's really good. You can see the hem has been trued there. I am doing the elbow length sleeve. That is the under collar. Those are two pieces cut on the bias and just one upper collar there cut on a straight of grain and it's already been interfaced. There's one step I want to do before anything else and that is to stay stitch the neckline. Now the neckline in this top, because it's got raglan sleeves and two pieces per raglan sleeve, it involves quite a few pieces. So it will involve the back, that's two separate pieces because there is a centre back seam. It will involve the top of the back sleeve, the top of the front sleeve and the front neckline. Once I've finished that, then I can go ahead and start putting this together. Before I start sewing, I'll show you what needle I'll be using. It's just a Schmetz Universal 8012, which is good for lightweight fabrics. I think it works well on rayon. This is a rayon with a Swiss dot type of detail. It's got very, very nice texture. It almost looks like there's linen in there, but it's just the way the rayon's been weaved. It's 100% rayon. And it's not so light as other rayons I've used. It's not, I would say it's between a light and a medium weight. I'll be stay stitching with a regular stitch length. That means 3.0 for me. And the seam allowance used for the collar and everywhere is 3 8 of an inch. So I'll be sewing this smaller than 3 8 of an inch, a little more than a quarter of an inch. These are the two back neckline pieces that I'm stay stitching. And then I'll move on to the front and then I'll do the little short sleeve ones. This is the front, one of the front pieces. This is the back raglan sleeve piece, both of them. And it's just very short here, but this will be part of the neckline. To make this easier to see and to understand, I have just traced the top parts of all these pattern pieces so I don't have to be dealing with the whole pattern piece. They're quite big and we don't need all the rest that comes down to see what we need to do. First thing is first, if you want to try this, you need to draw your seam allowances here on the top everywhere. You can see I've got them drawn. It's 3 eighths of an inch so it's quite easy to draw. Everything has it marked in red. So this is the front, this is the back piece of the Tropicana. The raglan sleeves are composed of two pieces, a front sleeve and a back sleeve. They are sewn like this. And when you look at this, you can see that there's a curve there that incorporates a shoulder dart on the top for fitting. That is something that raglan sleeves with woven fabrics really need for that shoulder fit. So the pattern already has a front facing and this seam here will meet that seam of the two raglan sleeves together. That's where the facing goes up to. Then the rest on the back is where you need to snip in the traditional way that you sew this type of collar. That's what I'm trying to avoid with an extra back facing so that the whole top has a facing inside and then we don't need to snip into anything. So basically the front facing that's already made incorporates the front piece and the front sleeve. So I've written there where it says armhole. <laughs> This unites to the raglan sleeve right there. If I overlap the seam allowances, I've got them in red there. Maybe if I fold one away, it's easier to see. Okay, here's my front piece. Here's my front sleeve at the armhole, at the arm side. It is a raglan sleeve. If I fold that seam allowance away and overlap right there, you will get that shape right there. And this is what the front facing has been drafted to include. So you can see it matches perfectly. This is how the pattern comes. This is the facing that you are going to have. So I'm trying to replicate this on the back. Basically, I will take my back here. This is the center of the back. There is a seam there. This is where the raglan sleeve will unite over here. This is my back sleeve where the armhole is. I'm going to fold that seam allowance away. It's 3 8 And I'm going to just meet it there like it would be sewn right there. I want to make sure the back facing will have the same width that this facing has. So I'll just take this pattern piece and mark it right there and then I'll make sure to measure all around the same length right there. I'll just go 
confirm that this facing is going to have the same length right there. Perfect. Okay, so here you can see the shape that my back facing is going to have. It's going to incorporate the back and the back sleeve. Now, just because this is a, a short section in the center and the curve going into the small of the back isn't really apparent, I'm going to cut the back on the fold for the facing, not for the blouse. So I'll fold away this seam allowance too. And I'll just take a fresh piece of paper so that it's neat. I like creating facings that are complete, not half of them, so I don't have to put them on the fold. I have two pieces of paper there, I've taped them together, I can fold it there, and I have a fold there. And this is where I can place this, and I'll just take my tracing wheel and mark around everything that I've done here on the inside. And over here I can trace. So this facing already has the seam allowance on the top, it has the seam allowance here for the seam over here because we've used pieces that have seam allowance so you can see that I've got the pen marked to the top here and now with my little dots that I marked from the tracing wheel I can complete this and now when I cut my facing I'm going to get a completed so this will be my back facing it's just putting these two pieces together getting rid of the seam allowance for that seam because you don't want a seam on your facing, getting rid of the center back seam allowance because the facing is not going to have it, and just creating one really clean facing piece that is going to extend from the shoulder seam. The shoulder seam is the join of both raglan sleeves, and then it's going to join with this front facing over here. It already includes the seam allowance. And you have another one of these over here and then you have a completed neckline full of facings where you can then attach and sandwich your color piece inside and just do one one continuous stitch flip it and it's going to be so much easier to make the shirt with the modified color construction method you will have one extra piece compared to the original pattern and that is the back facing that I've just shown you how to create. I have interfaced them all using block fusing as you know that I love to do. So this is my back facing, this is my two front facings. They will be joined together at the shoulder seams. I will be placing these front facings like this and then placing the back facing on top and then joining them at the shoulder seams. That means that there will be a facing all the way around the neckline, not only on the front. That will mean that assembling this collar that you will use those two pieces for, easier to sandwich between the neckline of the raglan shirt and the facings. Now the collar pieces are cut the same, they are just exactly the same. The upper collar is interfaced, the under collar is cut on the bias and on the pattern it appears to be interfaced and I have interfaced my light rayon version but because this is a linen and heavier I decided to not interface it. On the collar pieces you will have these notches here that are going to reference that shoulder seam, the seam that unites both of the raglan pieces, the front and the back raglan sleeves. Now because we don't need to snip anything this will just be a reference point to the shoulder seams right there. So we still need to mark them, but we just don't need to snip into them anymore. The under collar has a center seam. It's cut on the bias, so just handle with care and that will go on the bottom. I usually cut my under collar and don't ever touch it anymore until I'm ready to sew with it because it is on the bias. I just touched it now to show you. <laughs> At this point, you would construct your shirt as normal. You would just carry on with all the steps and when it gets to the part where you need to sew in your collar, and all your facings, you would start with this face and it's just sewing these two shoulder seams together on the facings. I'm at the machine and I'm about to sew these shoulder seams from the facings. I have already serged them. After sewing those seams, I can press them open and now I can serge all the outside edge of the facing and around this new added back facing that will clean it up. So I'll go ahead and do that and then I can start putting the collar together. These are the two under collar pieces together. I'm going to sew them at the center back seam with 3 8 seam allowance. 
I'm just going to finger press this open. It's linen, so it's quite easy to do that. You just fold it up like an accordion and let it go, and it's completely pressed without needing to burn your fingers or risk stretching out the under collar. After sewing this, place it so that you have the bottom edge that has the two notches down on the bottom. That's where the notches are. But I'm going to place this one right sides up, and then I'm going to take the upper collar that is interfaced one and place this one right sides together with that one. There are the notches on this one, so you have the notches facing down. And we need to match that up and sew from the edge here up, across, and then down completely from the edge. So that's pinned. The under collar is slightly shorter here. So you can see if you line this up here on the top, you can see that it's slightly shorter. So on this area, you will need to stretch. You can see I'm going to need to stretch this when I sew it just a little bit as I go up and then I go straight across and then down. And it's 3 8 seam allowance for all the collar and the neckline. When you turn this around, this will be the collar that's visible, the upper collar and the under collar will be at the back. So I'm going to trim the seam allowance of the under collar a little bit shorter. Just a tad to reduce the bulk there. I'll leave the interfaced one the same and I'm cutting the one that's not interfaced. Now depending on your fabric, you might have the under collar interfaced as well if it's a very light fabric. I did interface my rayon one because that fabric was very light and very flimsy. But for this linen, I don't think you need to interface on the collar. Now here on the corners of the collar, you could have pivoted there and then changed the direction and then snip. That is the traditional way that these are done. But I like having an intersection of seams and not snipping into anything. I think it just makes this area more stable over time and not, it doesn't weaken the fabric there. So I'm going to fold this towards the under collar on those same intersection of seams, fold it onto each other, have all this bulk towards the under collar here and then hold it firmly and flip it. And if you wiggle with it a bit, you will most likely get a very crisp corner there without having to use any tools or snip into anything. So I'm going to go to iron now, press the seam open here, just kneading this up and then I can be ready to put this into the neckline. Okay, I've got it pressed, I've got it turned right sides out and I have aligned the bottom edges and I'm just going to do a quick basting stitch to hold this together so it doesn't move anywhere. Now when you look at the side that has under collar, the one that has the center back seam, right there maybe you can see it, maybe not. This is shorter and this is going to allow the collar when worn to fold over properly and not have the excess bulk at the back and for that seam on the collar to roll to the back so that it won't be seen. It's supposed to be like that. I think it's a great feature for any shirt pattern to have. That on the collar is a different pattern piece, that it is slightly smaller, it's always good. And I also like it a lot when it's cut on the bias because it gives the collar better flexibility when it's going to be folded. So I'll just quickly base the bottom raw edges together. This needs to happen within the seam allowance, so smaller than 3 eighths. I have also transferred my marks onto the right side of the fabric here. So I've got a shoulder seam here and I've got another shoulder seam mark there. Okay, here we have our collar piece all together or assembled and here we have our shirt all assembled as well raglan sleeves are in the whole neckline is complete here is the front here are the two piece raglan sleeves the shoulder seam here center back seam the other raglan sleeve and the front so what we need to do now is take the collar we have the under collar facing up the one that has the center back seam that's what we have there and we are going to place that under collar right sides together with the neckline. And we are going to match that center seam of the collar with the center seam of the shirt. What we are looking here now is the upper collar where I'd mark the notches there. 
that notch there should match the shoulder seam which is the seam in the middle of the two raglan pieces so this one here here is where the raglan sleeve is and there is a center seam that goes along your shoulder that is where that notch should match here towards the center front you have another notch that will match the edge of the collar piece there so just align those and do the same with this other side match that notch to the shoulder seam and the little notch on the center front that's where the collar piece is going to go up to now compare it to the other side and make sure they are symmetrical i like to do this before sewing so that i'm sure that everything is good See the edges here are matching the center front and the collar pieces are on the same spot so you're not going to have a crooked collar and then we can go ahead and pin all this layer properly. I've taken all the time necessary to pin this collar onto the neckline. You see that I've got a lot of pins here. Now if I wanted to do a shortcut I could go and place my facings on top now and then use the same pins to pin again. But I have no rush I would rather just base this on and then I can just take my facings and then pin again and this acts like one day I think it's much easier to manage it's such a curved seam right here with the raglan sleeves and everything so I'd rather just take my time and do it in two steps I'll just go ahead and base this collar onto the neckline and I'll just do it within the seam allowance smaller than 3 8 I remind you that I have the under collar touching the back piece right here at the center seams right there at the back here I made sure to have all the seam allowances going in the correct way that I have the shoulder seam open and that the seams of the raglan sleeves are pointing towards the shoulder seams looking at the gamma in the same way I have right sides up of the shirt I have the upper collar here facing up and the under collar is down there and the edges are still raw and now I'm going to take my whole facing piece it's a complete facing piece including the back here is the shoulder seam that I'm going to match to here where the seams are open that's where I'm going to match this facing seam right there so that is my first reference point I really want those to match when you do this you don't need to snip into the collar or do any of that the traditional method has you do and it's not a bad method I would always do that method with lightweight fabrics where I don't want to add a facing to I think for a linen version and especially because I want to wear like a little jacket this is totally appropriate here is the neckline that will match this shape right there you can see that notch is going to match the collar that's right there and then you go along pinning this curve here the facing will extend all the way down the center front so you will also be matching it here and pinning it down to the bottom so I'll go and take my time and pin and then I'll be back to sew and once that seam is done then your collar is sandwiched between the facing and the neckline and it's so clean inside and so easy to do okay I'm going to show you what I've done I'll show you the slits on the inside you can see I've got 3 8 seam allowance there and then it widens out in the original pattern you would fold this in like this and that's how you would top stitch the slit and I would do that with a lighter fabric but I think for linen it will be too bulky like that with the layers so I've just decided to just press it open and that's how I'm going to do my slit I have about three quarters of an inch right there and that is the same amount I'm going to take as hem allowance here so that I can do mitered corners very easily later of course all the edges have been searched all that's ready now the bottom of this facing will close off the center front and so I'm going to start sewing there three quarters of an inch because that is what my hem is going to be three quarters of an inch from the edge and then I'll just finish there and then I'll start again at a 3 8 seam allowance I have the front facing pinned all along the center front going up until we start seeing the curves of the neckline and in this area I hand basted it I really didn't want to deal with the layers and the pins and I think this is just going to be so much better more comfortable to sew when we get to the other center front we have the pins going down the center front all the way down and then here also I have a pin marking where I'm going to sew at three quarters right there it's going to be a very long seam and it'll be catching this collar inside and I really like this method
Now for the section of the neckline, I don't have to worry about taking out pins and I'm just going to sew very carefully around these curves, always touching and feeling that I don't get puckers while I do this slowly at 3 eighths of an inch seam allowance. Okay, so that was nice and now we get back to the pins. Now here we are getting to the bottom again where I'll sew at a wider seam allowance because this will actually be part of the hem. Here at the center front, I'm going to cut the seam allowance smaller so that there's less bulk here when you fold it up, when you flip it out. And I don't do that all the way to the edge on the hem, but I can on the facing right there. I've left this hem at the same hem allowance a little bit towards the inside of the facing, but the facing actually is trimmed all the way. This is how I can fold this onto itself in the same way that I folded the collar pieces right sides out and get it looking nice here in the center front and the hem is going to be coming behind but just for a little bit the facing right there that's how the center fronts are going to be finished so i'll do the same on the other side and now here around the collar i can remove this basting stitch so that's how that's going to look you can see the facing is inside when this is worn this will be folded like that and the collar will be coming out of there and the collar is very clean there is the facing there there was no need to snip into anywhere so i'll just go ahead and tidy this up flip everything press everything and then i'll show you what it looks like i have finished pressing everything everything is super neat and what i want to do now is i'm going to top stitch this back facing down i don't want it to be moving around while i wear it it is optional, you know, you could tack it down on all of these seams. There are plenty of seams for you to be able to tack the facing down. But because it's linen and mainly black, why not top stitch it? So I've got the shoulder seam there and right there of the facing, that is the back facing there. And here on the pressing board, I've pressed it really neatly and pinned it while it's laying really flat. So I'm very sure that this is going to be nice and correct. I'm going to hand base that down while keeping this here nice and flat and then I'll take it to the sewing machine and sew that down. Otherwise all the rest is done, it's very neat, very nice. I've finished pressing the hem at the bottom. This is where the shoulder seam and the facings meet, that's where I'm going to start sewing. And here along, if you just put this flat, this is the front facing that's not going to be top stitched, I think that would not look very nice. But I have that raglan seam right there where I can tack that down right there. Just a little tiny tack to keep it down from moving. On the other side, I've done the same. Here I've got the shoulder seam of the facing meeting the shoulder seam of the shirt right there. That's where I started hand basting. And over here, I also have a pin there to mark where I'm going to tack that down. I'm going to start sewing there and I'll just follow the edge of the serged edge. Here you can see the facing on the back. It's been top stitched down as you saw me do. It's very neat, it's very nice. You can't feel that it's there. And it just makes sewing this so much easier. I have only sewn it from the back area. That's the only section that is top stitched. The front is not top stitched, it's just normal. I have only tacked it down to that seam of the raglan sleeve. And the collar comes from within. So much easier to sew. You don't need to worry about snipping into anything and it's just as neat and just as nice. I've done it in so many shirts with such great results. If you're not experienced in doing the classic technique and you're scared of doing it, you know, sometimes it might be a while before you even attempt to make a shirt like this and you can make it. You can make it with just the same beautiful results, but just so much easier. <laughs> So this is a lovely linen rayon blend. It's so good for a jacket like this. 
Now the thing I changed here is you can see that I've sewn my seam regular and just press the seams open. I didn't do a French seam on this one just because the fabric is heavier and I like French seams for fabrics that are lighter. On my red rayon one I did the French seam. I really like that. But for this one I just press my seams open. I have my sleeves that are three quarter length. They have the same slit detail here and deep hem as the red one. Remember you can see how to sew this on the Wardrobe by Me channel. I filmed all the technique is all there on the Wardrobe by Me channel. And it's really lovely. I like this jacket to be three quarters because I think it'll be super wearable for me for the whole year. I have slits on the side right there. Whenever I have slits like this, I can't help myself but make mitered corners. I think they always look so, so pretty. I will link down below videos that show how to do mitered corners. I've shown you how to do this on knit garments and on wovens. The technique is the same. I don't change anything just because one is knit or woven. So I will link you some resources down below. This is how it looks inside because I wanted this one to be a little bit more formal like a jacket. I didn't want any top stitching on it so I have no top stitching on this one. On the hem either. I've done all the hem by hand. I did sew the hem of the sleeve by machine though. That was the only thing I did by machine. I think you can't really see it. But all the rest is done by hand. I didn't top stitch down the raglan sleeves or anything like that. All the collar, I've just left it all nice and clean. And linen always presses so well, so you don't really need to top stitch things to hold things down, you know? So I'm so, so happy, very happy. One size larger than my body measurements just because I want it to be like a jacket. I have the five buttons. Let's see how it looks. Here I have my second Tropicana. The difference with this one is the fabric choice, a heavier fabric, linen with a bit of rayon in there. I sized one size completely up because I want this one to be like a little jacket. I intend to wear it with a layer underneath, a dress or some type of top so it's not going to be right next to my skin. So I've got one size more and I've done the three quarter length sleeve for this one. Really love it. I've got the same length as the red one slits on the side everything the same and I really like it like this that I can just throw it on something I can put any solid things underneath and I've just got a cami with this simple black skirt really love this look and it's totally my style Collar here is the same, it's very nice, very neat. You can't tell I have a hidden facing at the back of the jacket, it goes along the back neckline. The collar is just as neat and it was so much easier to sew. I was so happy to make this one after knowing the other one was perfect. All I had to do was go up a size. I had no doubts in my mind that this wasn't going to work, you know, I really knew this was going to work. <laughs> I'm super happy with my Tropicana shirt as a jacket as such, longer sleeve. This is perfect for my autumn, my winter, my spring pretty much for the whole year it never gets too cold and if I want something light to go on top like a little jacket this is perfect much easier to make than a blazer you know it's unlined and it's got colors that will go with a lot of things this is just what I paired with now but I could definitely wear this over a denim skirt or some jeans or just any black pants or just just a classic combination for me and I really really like it I really enjoyed it and how versatile this pattern can be just by changing up the fabric going up a size you can have a little jacket or just make it in the normal size with another fabric and it can actually be a proper shirt I hope to have motivated you to sew a classic style like this. I'm sure you have lovely woven fabrics waiting for you and you could take a plunge and make a shirt like this. You can use the trick that I showed you how to do to make the collar easier with the facing. So I wish you all the best in your shirt making adventures. This is a really nice one. I recommend. Remember to use the code Tropicana10 if you want to get this pattern for 10% off. The code is valid for a week since the upload of this video, so not forever. So if you did like this pattern, get it soon before the code expires. Thank you so much for joining and I'll see you again very soon. Happy sewing. Bye.